Hi everyone, welcome back. I am really sorry that we're not having class this week. I mean, really sorry, I would love to be at class. I have been asleep for the last five days. Um, I came home from the wedding in Chicago with COVID and a strep throat. And it has taken the wind out of my sails. But I'm feeling a little bit better today and I thought I would work on part three of our video so you have something to work on this week before we meet again next week. If you hear me slurping, it means I'm taking a sip of warm coffee with French vanilla creamer. Just trying to keep moving. Um, in front of you is the finished piece that I did as the inspiration for what we're working on. Um, here is where we are. I think this is the beginner class, um, in-person class, so I'm, I'm not gonna touch this. This is the first two washes, which is the, the blue of the jar and the light that gets reflected through it into the shadow, all as one wash, and then the, the warm yellow and orange as one wash. This painting really starts off this simply, and I have to tell you that as you go stage by stage, as long as you figure out um, what you want to do with each stage as you get smaller and darker shapes, it continues to be that simple. And we're gonna work on that. Let me get rid of these. By the way, the one in class is on the Kilimanjaro 300 pound um, watercolor paper cold press from Cheap Joe's. I bought the one that was on sale, the 10 pack or 10 sheet, 300 pounder. Lovely to paint on. You don't have to tape it down. It's really, really nice. Um, here's the one we're working on for the video. Okay. There we go. Um, so in the first two videos, we did what you saw. I put in the, the blue wash for the bottle and into the background and then the shadow shape. And then we did the, the light yellow and orange wash. After that, the next thing we did was we came in and we started to look at the shapes of the green stuff in the jar and put the very biggest shapes in lightly to get them in place. And we'll build up definition and we'll build up shape by going darker and smaller. We started to block in the greens, which then helped define the sunflowers. And I worked some on the orange um, lily. So that's where we got to last time. I had put in the the first pass at the browns and the sunflowers as well. Um, we will be continuing on that. And I may even make reference to this painting, and I'll keep this in my eye line when I'm starting to darken up those things. Um, so where are we going this morning? And I figure I've got about a half hour in me. Um, so we'll do about 30 minutes, at which point I'll take a break and start to edit this together for you guys. Um, so, um, the first big thing we can do is I'm gonna grab a brush. And I was thinking as I was setting up that I always set up in the same way. My palette's to my right, my water is on that side, my brushes are to my left my paper towel and my sponge and my rag are all near me. I work the same way every time and I realize that I do that because when I put the, the camera in place, I have to kind of change things a little bit. But try to set up the same way every time. In French cooking, there's the concept of mise en place, which is everything in its place. And I think that that applies to painting as well. You don't want to have to need something and have to go hunting for it. This is an oil painting where you've got three hours to make a decision. And 
pardon me, that I walked away for a second. I need to, I'm just, this paper is on a block, but sometimes the sheets pull away a little bit and I'm just gonna clamp that side. Not that we're working in big wet washes, it shouldn't really matter. Um, let's, let's focus in this area for a little while. I don't know where my brush went. Okay, another brush. Maybe I put that brush away. I don't know. All right. So I've got a 10 and an 8 round. Again, they're rosemaries. I do like these brushes. Simply wet them. They come back to a lovely point that's really nice to work with. I have a bad habit of putting my brushes away dirty when I'm teaching. So just remember we can take out a brush, just give it a good quick rinse. Okay, if we squint at the stuff in the mason jar, let's use some common sense. This area is underneath all of the bouquet that is sticking out in front of it. So this is all in shadow, so this gets darker. And then coming down this way to the water line, there's a strong line and a strong line with a little space between them. And then you can start to pick out a couple of little darks and a couple for the stems. So starting with the number 10 brush, I'm gonna activate the space on my palette that's got some green on it. Since our last meeting, I put some fresh sap green onto my palette. And at this point in time, as we're starting to work thicker paint and smaller shapes, you have to mix a little bit stronger. Um, in order to get my green to have a little bit more oomph to it, I put a little bit of Diox Purple in it. But be very careful with your Diox Purple We've learned the hard way a couple of times that that's really strong and it will, um, I'm going to put my palette right underneath the painting so I have a place to put my right arm. Um, so now we can come in with this dark and use the dark shape to Define our sunflower. Yeah. As I'm doing this, the whole painting is dry because it's been a week since I've touched this. Um, I can lean my pinky right on the paper when I'm doing fine work like this. This isn't big loose washes where I tell you to always, always, always use big strokes and work back here on the brush. When I'm starting to fill in this stuff, I will hold the brush closer to the tip and I'll lean my knuckle of my pinky onto the paper so that I can get the exact brush mark that I want to make. And I'm squinting at this fairly carefully decisions about these shapes. All the way down to the water. I'm going to wet my brush with clean water and soften that edge down there where it hits where the water is. And then I continue on. So the shape is something like that. And then a leaf comes down and goes through the letters. 
And maybe there's another bit here like this. As we get underneath the waterline, over here, it's dark almost all the way to the edge. And that, that leaf there that we put down is magnified under the water and in a different position. So we, we put that in. And it gets lighter as it goes down. There's also a lighter shape that comes down here. There's some more green on this side. And the fat bit that comes in there. It's already starting to look like above and below the water. I almost put my brush in my coffee cup. That would have been not good. It would have, that would have made me quite sad. All right, now I'm putting in this dark stem. And then there's a stem over here on this side. And there's a light bit. I'm gonna a little light bit that shines right through there. Darken this up a little bit here. A little bit stronger still. And we're gonna have to come back and make another pass at this, but I wanted to get started on what happens here. Now this comes down here. I'm going to let this dry um, and we'll come in and we'll add some more dark on top of it. I think I might also move the jar a little bit more to the blue-green color and we can do that with a glaze later. So let's let that sit and we'll come in and we'll do more work on that in the next pass. One of the next things we can do is, I think now would be a good time to make an adjustment on the light bit of the sunflowers. Um, that first pass is very, very light, which is fine, it's good. But I want it to be more warm yellow and a little bit stronger even in the base of it. I need to, in order to get a clean yellow, I need to clean out a well on my palette. I was trying to save all that paint that I had been using, but at some point you need sometimes to clear off a little space so that you can get a nice clean color. You don't want to just get muddy and muddy and you'll, you'll get the hang of when you need to clean out a space so that you have fresh color space or put out a second palette to work from. That's another thing you can do. Now, in this case, I don't want the yellow to get too dark or too warm, so I'm adding some lemon yellow to it. And I'm even gonna, don't tell anybody, but I'm even gonna put a little white in there. It'll be our little secret. Don't 
don't be afraid of going over the brown bit in the middle with this yellow. It won't hurt anything. So there's a couple things you can do with this. You can work wet into wet with this now if you want, but I don't, I'm warming that color up even more. I want it to have a sunflower color. Still be light, but wet it first with that yellow and then come in with the, the warmer color and leave some patches. So we'll have some soft edges to play with. Try and make some soft edges inside of there because um, we'll be doing a lot of hard edge work when we come in to darken up those flowers. And stepping back, I think the light of this can be even warmer. So I'm coming with a little bit more warm yellow into that paint mix. And you can see I'm coming right out to the dark greens now because I, I don't want to have those crispy whites really don't need them. Okay, so we've got that in there. And this one could potentially be even a little bit darker because it's on the shadow side. Don't be afraid to leave some of that beautiful light color showing through on the edges that might be useful to us later so maybe i do that there and here i'm back to holding the paintbrush back towards the end and i'm trying to make distinctive marks now i am trying to cover all of this yellow right now because I want to have it stronger than what it is in the first layer. Go right over that brown because that's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to wake up too much. And we're going to darken that up later anyway. So again, we get that yellow in there. And the reason why we can do this is because we got a chunk of that dark green leaf work in there so we can see it and compare it, everything at this stage, once you get those first couple of washes down, everything is about comparing. Is this as light or as dark as it needs to be compared to the thing next to it? And you're gonna spend all of the rest of your painting time doing exactly that. <clears throat> um, but by punching up this yellow, um, it's starting to come together a little bit more. I think that was the right play. Again, I have done something I shouldn't do, which is I started down here, and now if I want to put my hand down, I have nowhere to rest because the paper's wet. So I have to work from above and just be, just be a little bit careful. And uh, thank you guys for hanging out with me and allowing me to do this because after five days of non-stop sleeping from COVID, I need something to do today. Okay, and we're just basically, I mean, you can play a little bit within these flower shapes, but we're really just darkening up the overall flower shape. Now that I've got that in there, I can come in with a little bit darker yellow and squint a little bit and look at where some of those shapes start to form. And even make adjustments to the shape of the sunflower while we're here. Try to get them to be a little more pleasing. He said in his, his best Bob, Bob Ross voice, which right now is about two octaves down from where it normally is. Looking at this one, there's a nice shadow underneath. I'm gonna darken up that yellow a little bit with just scraps that are on my palette from the warm stuff, but start to lay in 
a dark shape under here and bring it right to the green. That'll help us later. This is also helping us because we're ending up getting some soft edges within the flowers, which I think I said, and allowing us to get a darker edge or a, a harder edge later when we come in when this is dry. So we'll, we're trying to think about ways that we can have soft and hard edges and lost and found edges. All right, having all this in here now, this is gonna lead me to the question of, do I make this stronger? Which is ultimately what I did in this one. But I love this color here. So can I, can I darken around it even more to bring that out? I don't want to make the sunflowers too dark. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, but that doesn't mean that the dark in the sunflowers can't be much stronger, which I would like to do, but they're wet, so we've got to wait on that. But these leaves back here can definitely be much stronger. And we'll push forward our lily without necessarily, and I'm back to being able to rest my pinky so I can, now I'm doing more of a drawing the actual shapes with this dark color. Getting these kind of just right. There's a Got one leaf in front, it's catching light and it's lighter. So I'm gonna leave that. And maybe this one towards the back is also lighter, but darkening up the rest of these leaf shapes. Now, right now that's all one big blob, but we can come with a damp brush and take the paint out of it and just maybe catch a little light there. Maybe catch a little bit of light here with our brush, just to give it a little bit of variance but still change the tonal value behind that lily. Um, same exact thing with this leaf. Let's get in here and really give this some tone here. I mean, let's face it, it's hidden behind the lily until it gets out to the edge anyway. really dark right here, even stronger than it also helps bring out that light that we just put in there. Maybe soften up the edges on that stuff. I think, I think that's helping. It's, I don't know that I'm going to have to push the lily as dark. I can push the saturation on it and come in maybe with some more pink and orange in it. But again, we, we, we looked at the overall values and said we need to darken the yellow. And it's a choice. It's all a choice because in the other painting, I had to go very strong and dark in here in order to have them read nicely with each other. Um, but by putting this yellow in and darker now, it helps me see what I wanna do and how dark I wanna make those darks, which actually there will be smaller bits that get even stronger and even stronger inside of there. But it's about doing it 
one layer at a time and lay one move at a time. The next thing I'm gonna wanna do when this is dry is come in and put, start to put in the darks in these three sunflowers. Um, however, that's got a little ways to dry yet. This is dry enough, I can come in, I'm gonna get a bigger brush because I wanna just get this in and do it. Um, I'm gonna mix up and we're at the 25 minute mark and I'm starting to sweat. So we're gonna, um, we're gonna make this the last move I make before um, I stop the video for today. And then I'll try and make another one tomorrow and get us a little bit further along. Um, but I wanna, looking at the photo, looking at how dark everything else is getting, I'm not gonna paint this glow back here any darker, but I think I can get away with adding tone into the blue green of the bottle or the jar. And I'm gonna use some cobalt teal with some sap green, more cobalt teal than sap green. You could use cobalt teal and cobalt blue as well. Make it a fairly thin wash. This is, this is a glaze. We're not trying to make this super strong. We just wanna beef up the color of the bottle a little bit. And I may blot some of this out. Or come in with water in a second. I think it wants more blue in it. And maybe, yeah, on this side of the jar, the color's gonna have more blue in it. I'm gonna take, sorry, I just knocked my head into that. Take my, my paper towel and just take a little bit of the tone out. Not a ton, but a little bit. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna leave the water line um, and not paint where the flat surface of the water is. Um, help make that, um, differentiate that in the bottle a little bit. And that's, that's one way to help with that. And we'll come back later in and put this dark underneath here and at the back of the, the jar and that'll help quite a bit. So we've darkened up our jar a little bit. And remember, and we're not going into that shadow outside. You can double hit the bottom if you want. That shadowy blue area really can be darker. Throw a little bit more in here and a little bit more here and maybe block that just a little bit. All right, so that's where I'm gonna leave y'all for now. Um, today is Sunday. Um, Monday, I'm gonna give you another half hour that will start with darkening here, or here, here, and here on the inside, the dark brown, so that we can see how dark we can go with the petals. Then we're gonna start to put in some of the details in the dark greens, and it will finally give us the decision on just how dark I want to go. I think that, I think in the lightest areas I can keep this where it is and just give it a, a glaze of some more pink to give it a difference from the yellows. Um, and then come in and make the shadow sides a little bit darker. So I think it's gonna be very close to this, but it depends on just how dark I get the rest of this. Um, and we need to build up out here a little bit. That'll help push that forward. Um, so we'll focus on this stuff Monday. And then we come, if we come back on Tuesday and do another one, then we'll finish up the jar and the shadow and that'll get us um, to a point where you can work on them throughout the week and we'll see where we are when we come back together. All right, I hope this was helpful. Um, I'm gonna go take a nap now and uh, I'll see you next Tuesday. Not, not this Tuesday, but if you're in my live class, um, a week from Tuesday.